Yeah, the attention uh, works based on this similarity score computed by this uh, inner product between the query vector and the key vector, right? And that works as a logit value, uh, uh, which is given as an input to the softmax module to produce the attention uh, weight values. But <clears throat> there are several different attention modules. I mean, several different ways of uh, computing attention. So. So there are a few uh, representative or famous, uh, yeah, famous research papers that proposed uh, this um, attention uh, attention modules, and there are uh, subtle differences in how we compute this attention weight. <coughs> so in this case, yeah, if you search for this uh, Luong and attention, and then uh, this guy is one of the first uh, first researchers that proposed this uh, sequence to sequence. Yeah, sequence to sequence models with attention, although he's not the first one, but yeah. <clears throat> so I'd like to yeah uh, intru uh, discuss several different versions of uh, yeah of computing this attention scores. So here, the score function, uh, this ht is a hidden state vector in the target. Uh, or de decoding phase, right? So that this first one, ht, is our query vector, and uh, this is a uh, uh, one of the um, uh, key vector, uh, which is a hidden state vector in the um, uh, encoding output, right? And then the first one, the first one, let's see. The first one is typical um, inner product, I mean way of computing the inner product in order to compute the logit value or the similarity based on the, um, yeah, the inner product between this uh, query and the key vector, right? And then uh, let's uh, uh, look at this general form of this uh, dot product. So, so here, instead of just a simple inner product, it involves some matrix in the middle. So in this case, so let me explain how this works. So in the case of computing the inner product, let's think of this uh, inner product, okay? So in this case, <coughs> yeah, let me just uh, rewrite it in this form. And then uh, it is computing the product between these two and these two, right? So that's how we compute the inner product uh, by just uh, summing those uh, element-wise or dimension-wise product, right? But what if uh, mm -hmm. we just consider the cross-dimensional uh, product term? For example, what if we just involve these two terms? Okay. So in this case, the inner product definition could be. So these two terms are kind of cross terms, right? So, <clears throat> so main intuition of computing this uh, inner product based similarity is, so if these two values within the same dimensions are, uh, yeah, are high simultaneously, and then uh, it will contribute to like high similarity, right? But if only one of them is a high, and then the other is a really low or close to zero, and then it will just produce. Uh, close to zero value, right? It's uh, it's it's about like yeah, uh, large value should meet also the large value, and then when multiplying them together, and then it can kind of yeah, it can be produced as a really big value, right? So that's the main idea of this uh, inner product based similarity, right? But um, yeah, we can just uh, consider the relationship uh, between the different uh, dimensions values across different dimensions like these uh, green lines, right? So that is that yeah, that can be kind of uh, viewed as a kind of general form of our inner product similar uh, based similarity. And then what if we just uh, make it more general as 
by A and B and C and D. So in this case, uh, we can just uh, consider this uh, weighted sum of uh, this uh, product uh, between different dimensional values given these two uh, vectors, right? So let's just uh, simplify this uh, scenario as having uh, all zero for this uh, cr cross term. And then maybe let's set it as uh, three and uh, four. And then how can we model this uh, representation mathematically? So in that case, yeah. We just bring this into yeah, the lower part, and then, let's see. So in terms of an inner product, we can represent it as like this uh, by putting the identity in the middle, and then uh, that will have no effect, right? But what if we have a 3 and 4, and then it's equivalent to changing uh, these diagonal values as 3 and 4, right? Mm -hmm. So if we incorporate this uh, diagonal value, which is not uh, the same as the um, identity matrix, and then, yeah, by incorporating this uh, diagonal matrix in the middle, we can represent uh, this, yeah, this relationship, which means, which gives a uh, higher weight on maybe the second dimensional product, right? <clears throat> and then, uh, what if uh, we have maybe five and six, right? So this uh, five is a uh, weight assigned to the product between the first dimension and the first dimension in the first vector and the second dimension in the second vector. So in that case, this uh, 5 and 6 is actually placed over here, 5 and 6. Okay. So in this case, yeah. If you just uh, evaluate them, yeah, so yeah, let me just uh, do this uh, evaluation explicitly, and then <coughs> 3 times 1 plus 6 times 2. So that is the first term, right? I'm, I'm just doing the inner product with the first two terms. Then 5 times 1 plus 4 times 2, right? So these two are the elements that we obtain, right? <coughs> and then uh, here we have, right, and then negative 3, and then 1, and one right right and so <clears throat> one and negative three which is a pro uh, product between the first dimensional values right that will be assigned the weight of a three which correspond to this guy right and then um, two and negative three two and negative three got assigned the weight of six which correspond to this guy, right? So that way, if we make this matrix in the middle as it, as just a general full matrix, which means that yeah, every element can be non-zero. So in this case, the resulting form is just a linear combination of all the possible products between different dimensional values given these two vectors, okay? So we can define our uh, similarity or the logit value indicating the similarity value uh, for our attention uh, module. Uh, if we define it in this uh, general form, and then uh, it can be yeah, represented as this form. So this guy is the row vector and the, our matrix, uh, which is a square matrix, and this guy, right? So this is a kind of a general kind of form of this uh, product-based or kind of an inner product-based uh, similarity kind of a score yeah yes uh, similarity computation okay and then uh, how do we set this uh, w a or those uh, uh, three five yeah the, this matrix in the middle so how do we de determine that matrix we can just uh, uh, specify them as our parameter okay and then we just uh, uh, train them using the back propagation. Okay, so that can be trained in an end-to-end -end manner. So starting from the random initialization, and then uh, this matrix can be uh, opti yeah uh, trained to an optimal uh, set of values. But anyways, uh, in this case, 
we can incorporate this weighted sum of these uh, all the different possible product uh, values between these two. So that is a general form of computing the inner the logic score, uh, which is an input to our attention module. So this is one way, and uh, uh, let me introduce another way. So we want to compute the similarity between these two vectors, right? And then uh, we introduced some trainable matrix in the middle, right? And then uh, what if we just uh, build our attention layer, attention module as a uh, its own trainable, fully connected layer of, for example, <coughs> so this these two and these two. So it's uh, one two, which is the first uh, first vector, and the second vector is a negative three and one, right? So we just concatenate them as a one single uh, input vector, uh, which is an input, I mean, yeah, to a uh, fully connected layer, for example, okay? And then we can just uh, uh, construct this uh, linear layer, a okay? linear layer. So that is this uh, concat-based uh, way of attention module. Okay, and then uh, what if we just uh, build like two layer network or even uh, more layers of network in order to compute this logic value between these two vectors? In that case, yeah, we can of course do so. So, for example, we just reduce the dimensionality in into two in the middle by using the first linear combination weight. Uh, specified our uh, matrix W1 and then uh, once yeah so its dimension could be like 2 or 3 or so right and then uh, we can apply the nonlinear unit uh, which is maybe ReLU or maybe 10H and so on right and then uh, this part in yeah this part although it's drawn very small, uh, but let's call that second layer and its parameter set or matrix as W2. So in this case, yeah, what will be our uh, output logic at the end after this uh, passing through this uh, two layer neural net? So that can be represented in this form in the paper. So this is the concatenation operator which is uh, yeah, represented by this uh, semicolon, okay? And then we first went through uh, the first layer uh, linear transformation, and then in this particular example, we used the 10H. I mean, you can use a ReLU and uh, any other uh, nonlinear unit. And then this is our W2. But why is it uh, written in this uh, lowercase letter instead of this uh, capital letter, which he made, uh, represents a matrix. So in this case, okay. yeah. So this W two will produce this a uh, scalar value anyways, right? Because we want a single scalar logit value that indicates the similarity between these two, right? So in that case, this W two will be just a uh, row uh, row vector given these two dimensional input vector that we are given here right so this is a this this is w2 and this is the um, uh, so hidden state vector uh, corresponding to this part right so that way the left layer uh, the parameter is uh, always represented as a single vector instead of a matrix because the output is uh, always the scalar value any questions about it? So this is another way of computing the attention module. And then who or how we, I mean, how do we train this W1 and W2? So they will be trained entirely in an end-to-end -end manner, right? So, yeah, so some, uh, uh, one student asked a question about how we train this attention layer, or for example, this uh, H0 or H1 is transformed into 
our query vector, right? And then how do we train the parameter that is involved in this layer? So we don't actually directly supervise or we don't teach our model uh, that this specific vector of an A1 or A2 to be a particular uh, ground truth vector. They are just, yeah, so for example, so we will uh, apply the softmax loss given this uh, output word, right? So it should have uh, produced maybe home, but uh, it uh, currently produced maybe a school. And then given this uh, comparison between this uh, one-half vector of home and the current output uh, that is uh, uh, represented as a softmax vector uh, corresponding to this uh, school. And then the back propagation is done by following yeah, this path and then he will uh, train this uh, this layer but also it is branching into this part right so gradient will be I mean when branching out the gradient will be yeah duplicated and then yeah so back propagation is uh, yeah all yeah reaching all the way at this point which is the yeah, the layer or trainable kind of layer that converts this H0 and the A1 into A1. But uh, through this uh, backpropagation path, in this original form of this uh, just a simple inner product based uh, attention computation, <clears throat> yeah, once we obtain this uh, A2 or A1, and then until we obtain this uh, Z1, which is our context vector or weighted average vector, there is no trainable part, right? Because, yeah, this is our query vector, and once we obtained that, and then in this uh, current form of a attention module, this uh, inner product computation doesn't involve or doesn't have any trainable part, and then uh, softmax part is also doesn't have any uh, trainable parameters, right? And then, yeah, assigning the the attention weights into our value vectors, and then. Uh, computing the weighted average of these encoding vectors. So all the way up to this point uh, to finally generate this uh, weighted average vector of Z1. So there is no trainable parameter, right? So we have yeah, no parameter uh, to train, but still back propagation can be uh, go back to all the way to this part where uh, we have to find the suitable or optimal parameters uh, that plays a role of converting this H0 into our query vector, right? So that part will be trained, right? But what if we use this uh, general form of general form of like uh, similarity score computation? For example, this entire matrix will be our uh, set of parameters to train, right? So in this case, in this part, uh, the, the way of computing the score between this uh, query vector and each of our key vector, right? So computing that score, uh, we now have the um, trainable parameters that are involved into, into this process, right? So when doing the backpropagation, yeah, we will of course obtain the backpropagation or the gradient value with respect to this matrix itself, right? And so that's how we train that part, right? As part of our like hidden uh, hidden layer computation. This is what is the most important thing. This 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 요거와 요거 두 개를 원래는 그냥 아무 이제 트레이너블한 파라미터 없이 이너 프로덕트가 그냥 계산이 됐었잖아요. 근데 저 부분에서 그 아까 그 이제 스코어 매트릭스인 W가 이렇게 관여를 해갖고 거기서 이제 파라미터가 이제 A, B, C, D가 이렇게 나오잖아요. 그러면 걔네들에 대한 우리가 백프라블 그러니까 그레이디언트를 구해서 걔네들도 한, 같이 동시에 업데이트가 되는 거죠. 애니 어더 퀘스천스? 네. 여기서 이게 그 트레인 가능한 
아, 네. 네. 그러니까 이게 지금, 이게 우리가 쿼리 벡터인 것까지는 알겠죠? 그리고 저게 여기서의 A1 혹은 A2 이런 거예요. 각 타임 스텝마다. 그러면 그 다음부터 얘부터 지금 이 Z1까지 계산되는 한번 과정을 보자고요. 그 과정에서는 어떤 트레이너블한 파라미터가 없이 그냥 고정된 연산이에요. 그 고정된 연산이라는 게 뭐냐? 구체적으로는 얘랑 가까이 키들이랑 이너브 프로덕트 구하죠. 이너브 프로덕트 구하는 거는 뭐 정해진 어떤 펑션이기 때문에 트레이너블한 파라미터가 없죠. 그리고 이제 얘를 가지고 이제 그 소프트맥스, 소프트맥스 레이어 자체도 트레이너블한 파라미터는 없어요. 그죠? 그래서 이렇게 웨이트를 구했다. 혹은 가중치를 구했다. 그러면 이 가중치를 가지고 여기에 적용해 갖고 웨이티드 에버리지 혹은 웨이티드 썸 구하는 이 과정. 여기서도 트레이너블한 파라미터 없죠. 그러니까 이제 이 최종적인 최종적이라는 건이 Z1을 구할 때까지 그러니까 A1에서 이 Z1까지의 이 forward pass 중에는 어떤 트레이너블한 모듈도 없다는 거죠. 그러나 이제 뭐 명확하게 정의된 그리고 이제 미분 가능한 미분 가능하다는 이제 백하다는 건 이제 백 프랍이 가능한 그런 레이어로서 뭔가 그런 컴퓨테이션 그래프는 정의가 되어져 있죠. 또 다른 질문 있어요? 오케이, okay, then uh, similarly when using uh, this concave-based uh, attention module, this W1 and W2 will be uh, trained in an end-to-end -end manner. So uh, similar to how we train this uh, matrix in the middle, right? And then now, <clears throat> uh, similarity computation between this uh, query and the key vector is now uh, like compute obtained as an output. Through this a trainable neural net, which is composed of two layer, fully connected layer, right? And so during the back propagation, then those two uh, the layers uh, corresponding to these two layers will be, uh, yeah, uh, trained through this uh, back propagation. Okay, so they will be trained in an end-to-end -end manner. Okay, and then <coughs> yeah, let's just. Uh, Simplify the situation into a yeah. So we are dealing with the two-dimensional vector as a uh, both of the uh, query and the key. But what if we just use a scalar or uh, one-dimensional vector of our query and key vector, and then let's construct this kind of a concat-based yeah concat-based attention module. And then this is a query vector, and uh, this is the key vector, right? And then Let's just think of just a one simple, I mean simple, one layer neural net based on this uh, like a concat kind of uh, approach. So in this case, yeah, let's just simplify it as a x and y. And then let's define the linear layer that produces this a single output of our logit value or similarity value between this uh, query and key. And then it can be represented as this ax plus by where uh, X and Y are input nodes, and A and B are our uh, parameters to learn. Of course, uh, if we incorporate our bias, and then I can be defined in this form, right? And then, <coughs> um, given this a uh, scalar, I mean one-dimensional vector, uh, what will be our uh, inner product-based uh, similarity value? So if we just compute just the original inner product, which doesn't involve any trainable parameter, and then it will be x times y, right? And then if we consider this a general form, general form, then yeah, there is only one com yeah, only one case of computing this uh, product because uh, we only have single dimensional vector, right? And then but yeah, but still we can think of our parameter as d, right? So it can it is like x is our X and Y are our uh, two uh, input vector, and then now our W is a scalar value, and that scalar value is represented as D, right? Okay. So in this case, <coughs> we can clearly see the difference. So in this case, even though we multiply a particular value with the input node, but how, uh, yeah, how, uh, yeah, how we compute the logit value is based on this uh, addition operation or summation operation, right? So that way, 
So if a uh, x becomes larger, and then if a is, for example, 2, and then regardless of the y value that is like corresponding uh, dimensional value, it doesn't care about that value, but if I, I become larger and larger, and then with the ratio of alpha, my logic score or this kind of similarity score will increase, right? So in this sense, I mean, the similarity is defined based on two, two parts or two entities, right? So we have to like, consider their relative relationship between these two. But in this particular case, x and y are independently or separately contributing to the similarity score, right? So that is a kind of a, a characteristic of the second cat based uh, logic or uh, similarity score computation. And also, yeah, as I mentioned, this is uh, based on this uh, addition or summation operation. So sometimes it is called additive attention model. Okay, so if we concat these uh, two vectors and then basically their nature or uh, the, na the nature in computing how we combine the information given from these two is based on the addition operation, right? And then in the case of an inner product one whether it is a simple form or this a general form, it is based on this a multiplication, right? So this is the main kind of characteristic of this inner product based comp uh, similarity computation. Okay, so we are like uh, considering uh, whether the two values are high simultaneously, right? So if one values, only one values are high, it is not enough to uh, obtain high similarity value. Okay, so so this is a kind of two uh, yeah, uh, fundamental differences, okay? And then uh, how can, yeah, uh, can we just combine these two approaches? Okay. Can we just combine the two approaches? So uh, the combined approach that we can think of is ax plus by plus maybe cxy plus maybe d, okay? So in this case, we can, yeah, uh, consider both of these a uh, concat based relationship or addition based relationship and also this uh, multiplication or the product based relationship or similar uh, to compute to the similarity score computation okay so this is a kind of a, like the integrated approach po uh, of these uh, both yeah both schemes or both strategies and so sometimes it is yeah it is called the uh, Trilinear attention module. Okay. I mean, it's uh, not much important. Uh, the reason we call it as a trilinear is because, yeah, simply we have the first one and the second one, and also additionally the product one. So we consider the th three of them, and then uh, uh, construct a linear or yeah, try. I mean, the linear combination of these three parts, right? So that way, it is sometimes called a trilinear. Attention module, and also let's just uh, generalize it into a vector version. So in this case, we simplify the scenario as a single-dimensional vector, right? So in the case of two-dimensional vector, so in the case of an x1 and x2, which is our first input vector, and the okay, so yeah. Uh, let me add uh, one more, exp to uh, one little explanation. So how can we model this guy, okay? And then uh, we can draw their computation, uh, corresponding computational graph as follows. So uh, based on, on top of this uh, concat based model, we actually add additional node of x times y, right? So using the two input uh, node, then we just uh, add or con concat their product as additional node, right? So that is corresponding to this guy. And then uh, if we consider this uh, general kind of multi-dimensional version, then, <clears throat> and then y1 and y2, and then we further concatenate additional node, which is corresponding to x1, y1, and x2, y2. Okay, so this is a, a trilinear version of 
I mean general kind of form of a trilinear yeah, attention module. So this is the uh, uh, our input vector. Yep. So in this case, uh, as you can see, yeah, ax1 plus bx2 plus cy1 dy2 plus ex1 y1, which considers the product between them, right? F x2 y2, right? Okay, so. <clears throat> and uh, in uh, more uh, intuitively, uh, if our vector is 1, 2, and negative 3 and 1, and then we further concatenate another two dimensional vector, which is just an element wise product, which is 3 and 2. Okay, so all together, uh, using this as a, a yeah, single, uh, I mean, the vector given as our attention module, whether it is a two-layer neural net or maybe single-layer neural net, yeah, it's up to yeah, it's up, it's up to our design, uh, which layer to use to compute this a single, uh, I mean, the final logit or logit score. Okay, so in this case, uh, what we didn't consider was yeah. So of course, in this case, it is not fully general form because it is not considering the it is not considering the product between like x1 and y2, for example, and x2 and y1. So we didn't incorporate these two terms, right? But yeah, we don't yeah we don't go that uh, we don't go that far when using this in practice. Okay. Any questions about this trilinear tension module? Yeah. 왜안 쓰냐고요? 이게 일단은 프로덕트를 따지기 시작하면 이게 개수가 너무 많아져요. 그러니까 이게 디멘전이 지금 두 개일 때는 뭐 그렇긴 한데 이게 뭐100 디멘전이다. 그러면은 100 디멘 그러니까 100 디멘전 쿼리, 100 디멘전 키가 있으면 이제 요 트라이디는 요거는 이제 100 디멘전만 추가가 되는 거예요. 그러니까 300 디멘전으로 이거 커버를 할 수가 있어요. 그러니까 여전히 이거는 이제 100 디멘전의 그러니까 리니어한 정도인데 크로스 텀은 이제 100 곱하기 100인 이제 만 디멘전이 붙어야 되잖아요. 그러니까 그게 너무 많아서 이제 뭐 오버피팅도 되고 뭐 학습도 너무 오래 걸리고. Any other questions? Okay, so that was the yeah a, a little bit of a, the technical details of our attention module. So yeah, the videos uh, have been uploaded, but uh, I didn't yeah organize them. So it will be yeah it will be available maybe within yeah uh, tonight. Okay, then uh, yeah, let me just uh, address this question of sequence to sequence. So, yeah, the different orders and how yeah how in the world uh, can our model can our neural net model based on this sequence to sequence uh, learn about different uh, grammatical structure or orderings? So, So we are uh, discussing this kind of issue. So if you remember um, the corresponding lecture <coughs> video about this slide, then yeah, interestingly and surprisingly, our sequence-to-sequence -sequence model with attention actually uh, learned to reverse, uh, if necessary, uh, learn to change the um, uh, word orders uh, between different languages, right? So for example, I go home and then So if it is uh, translated in this manner, uh, let's think of the order. So when decoding this word, and then the attention will be assigned, yeah, mostly in this word. But 
for this uh, second word when uh, translating into Korean and then yeah we will assign this guy right and then this guy so <clears throat> that is represented uh, in this yeah this reversed pattern of this uh, attention orders between the input and the output or source or the target uh, sentences and then yeah we didn't explicitly uh, change the order at that particular I mean that specific part between these two input and output uh, uh, sentences, right? But uh, neural net actually self-learned, so the neural net actually uh, properly learned um, yeah, when to reverse the order uh, when assigning the attention. So, so it is a little bit tricky to explain, but yeah, it is all based on like uh, uh, co-occurring patterns between the word and uh, catching out uh, catching up this information uh, from our neural net so yeah consider uh, there are many sentences I mean uh, among our training data uh, we have many sentences that uh, that contains uh, this home and also uh, this output word jibe okay so in this case yeah um, during our decoding phase as a second word so this is the first word and uh, this is second word and then uh, the second word when uh, uh, having to produce or predict that particular word so this is our uh, RNN or LSTM cell and then we know that the input is like this uh, previously generated token and also another input is the attention weighted yeah, attention weighted uh, encoding vector of these uh, I, go, and home, right? So, yeah, we will uh, assign a particular attention weight and then do the linear combination or weighted average of these uh, three encoding vectors and then give it as an additional input to this RNN, right? So, um, among the many, yeah, at first the neural net didn't know which uh, word uh, to give a higher, higher attention weight, but uh, among our training data, I mean a uh, large number of training data, uh, there were many uh, sentences that uh, both contain this uh, home and maybe jibe, okay, as an input and output word. And uh, when having to predict this uh, particular word jibe, and then yeah, it will be yeah beneficial or it will be more yeah I mean useful or helpful uh, if we provide a particular kind of input that can work as an indicator or a clear indicator that it's time to generate the word jibe okay and then when browse, browsing through these keywords that we are given in this sentence uh, oh okay we found this uh, ho uh, word home and then in some other cases uh, when having to generate the same word of jibe and then uh, we found the same common word of this uh, home right so in that case, okay, so these are the co-occurring or common words that are existing in, in most of the cases when having to generate this particular, I mean the same word of jibe, and then that's how we uh, yeah, learn these uh, correspondences between this uh, home and jibe, okay? And then, <clears throat> yeah, in terms of their word order, where is this uh, word home appearing? So it is not appearing in as a second word. It's uh, mostly appearing in the yeah in maybe yeah after the main verb main verb right. So yeah, it just tried to find the the common common occurring pattern of that word of home. But it just happened that uh, this uh, word home uh, is actually uh, placed in like in the like relatively latter uh, positions. Attention, 
이첫 번째 단어를 맞출 때 이때 백프랍은 이제 여기서의 이제 디코딩 단에서 뭔가 학습을 하고 이제 이때 제네레이트 된이첫 번째 단어를 이제 보느라고 아, 네 조거를 볼때 이제 생성된 이게 이제 그 어텐션 웨이티드 된 에버리지 벡터예요 웨이티드 에버리지 인코딩 벡터 그렇죠 그러면 얘가 이제 잘 생성이 됐는가 안, 안 됐는가에 대한 잘잘못을 물어서 얘를 또 최적의 값으로 생성하려고 하는데 중요한 건 이제 얘가 있을 혹은 얘가 있을 때이 뒤쪽에서는 지금 백프랍이 지금 이렇, 이렇게 흐르죠 그러면 여기서 인풋워드 이게 뭐 잘못됐으면 이 뒤쪽 가서 얘한테 또 물을 수도 있고 하여튼 근데 여기서 또 얘에서 생성된 그 어텐션 웨이티드 된그 웨이티드 에버리지 벡터 혹은 컨텍스트 벡터 걔에 대한 잘잘못을 묻는데 중요한 건 얘에 대해서만 우리가 백프랍을 거는 게 아니라 이게 이제 뉴런넷 RNN에서는 이게 이렇게도 가지만 이게 또 이쪽으로도 가고 이게 이쪽으로도 가고 그럼 여기서 생성된 요 텐션 얘한테도 가고요 또 여기로 가서 얘한테도 또 가죠 그러니까 지금 당시에 내가 어떤 워드를 잘 받느냐 안 받느냐 그것도 내가 이제 고쳐주지만 지금 이 뒤쪽에서의 RNN이라는 건 어쨌건 정보가 쭉 쌓여가는 이 플로우이기 때문에 그 뒤쪽에서 뭔가 잘못한 게 있으면 잘못한 게 있으면 어찌됐건 걔도 뭔가 아, 잘잘못이 이제 좀, 네. 막 이렇게, 네. 그게 돼갖고, 걔도 이제 코렉션이 되는 거야. 뭐 하여튼 이거 좀 컨셉츄얼한 설명이긴 하지만, 어찌됐건 이제, 이게 지금 이 단어, 그리고 이 단어를 생성할 때, 아, 요 워드가 지금 어텐션을 걸어서 필요하다? 이게 근데 지금 우리가 시퀀스를 디코딩 하는 과정에서는 세 번째 단어를 생성할 때는 이게 개 단어만 생성, 개 단어만 보고 생성하는 게 아니라, 인풋 모든 애들을 다 보고, 여기다 어텐션을 걸되, 첫 번째와 두 번째에서 이제 어떤 어텐션을 걸어서 웨이티드 백, 에버리지 벡터를 뽑아왔는지 그것도 뭔가 잘못했으면 하여튼 걔도 좀 고쳐지는 거죠. 그러니까 네, 지금까지 했던 모든 과거에서의 잘못된 부분들이 뭔가 어느 정도 수정이 좀 종합, 네, 된다는 거죠. 그 그레이디언트 시그널이 그렇게 이제 네, 모든 과거의 이제 어텐션 벡터들에 네, 전달이 되는 거죠. 근데 뭐 여전히 이게 뭐좀뭐 뭐 구체적으로 이게 참 저게 딱 어떻게 그래도 좀 이렇게 좀 뭔가 좀 아름답게 아니면 진짜 사람이 했을 법하게 뭔가 이걸 하도 이게 직접적으로 가르쳐주지 않았는데도 불구하고 저런 게 어떻게 되는가 뭐 그게 좀 신기할 수 있는데 뭐 그냥 뭐 받아들이면 될것 같아요 그게 어떻게 보면 어텐션의 어떤 unreasonable effectiveness 그 unreasonable effectiveness of RNN 뭐 그거 배웠잖아요 그리고 블로그 네 그래서 이제 어텐션도 그런 식으로 좀 뭔가 네, 약간 이렇게 엔드투엔드로 뭔가 스스로 네, 그렇게 좀 적절하게 뭔가 얘가 좀 신기하게도 뭔가 그걸 배우네 같은 그런 요소가 분명히 있긴 있어요. 네. Okay, so in summary, yeah, this attention kind of pattern. I mean, how we properly attend to the suitable word or the the most important word at the particular time step in the decoding phase. Yeah, so that is just trained in an end-to-end -end manner without the direct kind of supervision. But uh, yeah, let me add uh, just uh, one other, yeah, another comment. And then um, can we just uh, impose the um, direct supervision? So currently in this uh, sequence to sequence with attention, uh, maybe in the in the machine translation case, we don't directly supervise about this uh, word order, right? But can we just, can we just uh, directly supervise uh, this attention yeah, attention pattern. So it is still possible. I mean, it is of course possible because, yeah, it can be viewed as a kind of multitask learning that we studied. So, so let's get back to this attention weight. Okay. Okay. So here uh, we have to. Generate the uh, word bird, right? And then now the currently assigned attention weight like this is actually giving the um, higher weight onto this part, for example. For example, like so, given this uh, yeah encoding kind of vector, and then uh, we wrongly assigned like this part really highly, so maybe 0.6 and point 0.4 and uh, yeah close to zero for all the other parts but here we know that when generating this uh, bird yeah uh, the proper attention vector or ideal attention vector should be 
assigning the higher weights onto <coughs> this part and maybe a little bit on this part, right? So in this particular case, uh, can we just uh, directly incorporate this uh, uh, proper, yeah, proper uh, attention information uh, to, yeah, to influence the, the training or the supervision of our network? So it is still possible. So in that case, so we are given this uh, uh, softmax output as an attention vector, right? And then suppose we know that the attention weight should have been like 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 and 0 and 0, right? So in that case, we can just apply the softmax vector, yeah, onto that, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean the ground truth vector uh, as a kind of softmax, the softmax loss by just comparing the ideal attention weight and also the current attention weight, right? So that is also possible to uh, just intercept or intervene in the middle of our network and then directly supervise that kind of representation in, yeah, in the middle of our network. So yeah, <clears throat> at a high level, I think it's a kind of important or useful perspective. But suppose you are yeah, doing the image classification uh, between maybe dog and uh, cat and ship and then suppose yeah you you know you remember the multitask learning right and then uh, maybe yeah it is a uh, yeah uh, imposing another loss and then the loss from here and the loss from here yeah they will be kind of linearly combined in the, into this form uh, as a multitask learning and then uh, the gradient signal coming from, yeah, will come from those two directions and then they will be merged or added together in terms of their total gradient, right? And then what if you just uh, apply or uh, create or generate the gradient directly at this point? So given this activation map, okay, given this activation map, for example, we can apply the um, L1 regularization of this of this activation map. So for example, given many of these uh, different activation value, and then we want them to be like close to, I mean, as uh, as sparse as possible. Or, yeah. Or, I mean, although it doesn't make sense, yeah, we want the activation map uh, corresponding to the first channel is at least uh, that is the maximum value, or that is the largest compared to other, yeah, other layers, right? So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it doesn't have any kind of uh, practical justification, but uh, my point is that you can freely impose any other types of loss that directly imposes the particular pattern of a uh, of a activation map or the, in general the hidden state vector in the middle of our network right so in that case still uh, we just uh, create our uh, second version of loss and then still it is just uh, combined into this form of just combining these two loss uh, that is uh, coming from here and uh, coming from here and then yeah because we have we need to combine them with a particular uh, linear weight right so in a, at a high level, it can be viewed as a kind of a multitask learning kind of a loss, but uh, the second loss is kind of yeah, direct supervision on the um, uh, on the hidden state vector in the middle of our network. Does it make sense? So in in this case, I mean from this perspective, uh, when looking at this uh, <coughs> this guy, so in the whole for the propagation path, this attention weight is uh, some part of hidden state vector that is generated in the middle of our network. And then, yeah, we directly supervise that vector to be a particular vector that we give as our ground truth, right? So in, in that sense, yeah, we are directly kind of supervising uh, some particular hidden, hidden state vector in, uh, that is generated in the middle of our network. So that loss is combined with the main loss of this uh, uh, word level prediction in our uh, decoding phase in a decoder. And then uh, we just uh, linearly combine them and then yeah, just uh, yeah, train them by using this combined loss. 
Does it make sense? Yeah. 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 Ah, yeah. Ah, 일단은 그러니까 이게 지금 여기서 attention weight가 아, attention weight가 이렇게 이 attention weight가 되어야 한다는 거. 지금 예를 들면 여기서 아, ground truth를 여기서 뭐 예를 들면 80% 여기에 15% 여기에 5% 이게 내가 생각할 때 가장 이상적인 attention weight다. 저걸 ground truth로 직접적으로 주는 거거든요. 네. 근데 이제 중요한 건저 값은 하여튼 이 동일한 이미지에서 얻어져야지 되고요. 그리고 중요한 건저 그라운드 트루스는 과연 누가 주느냐? 저 그라운드 트루스가 뭐 어디 뭐땅 네? 파서 나오나? 네? 저 그라운드 트루스도 결국은 사람이 이제 생성을 해줘야 되는 거거든요. 그래서 훨씬 더 사람 입장에서는 더 귀찮은 작업이에요. 저런 중간 단계에서의 뭔가 어떤 결과도 우리가 수퍼비 수퍼비전을 하겠다. 그러면 어쨌건 그거에 대한 그라운드 트루스를 또 준비를 해둬야 되니까 이제 그 부분이 사실 조금 이슈긴 이슈예요. 네, 근데 이제 또, 이, 이, 또 이, 이 이미지 쪽에서는 직접적으로 그렇게 이제 아네 그, 네, 뭐 어디서 네, 한국에 이제 또 다른 어떤 또 네, 비전 쪽 하시는 이제 어떤 다른 연구실에서 한 연구 중에 하나가 이제 저 텐션 웨이트를 좀 그렇게 했어요. 그러니까 그, 저 텐션 웨이트에 대한 그라운드 트루스를 만드는 것 자체가 쉽지 않은 작업이죠. 뭐 어려울 거 아니에요. 뭐, 이거 뭐 사실 80%, 15%, 5% 이거 뭐 그냥 내가 적당히 만든 값인데 저게 그라운드 로스 뭐, 그라운드 트루스로서 뭔가 걸어주려고 하면 좀 약간 부담되잖아요. 저게 이제 진짜 창값인지 아닌지. 그래서 저 그라운드 트루스를 좀 얻어내고자 하는 걸로써 이제 어떻게 했냐면 뭔가 사람, 그러니까 이게 어떻게 보면 사람이 어디를 보고 그리고 뭐 좀, 아, 여기를 봤을 때저 단어를 생성을 하는구나. 막 약간 이런 거를 좀, 약간, 약간 그런 거랑 다 관련이 되는 거잖아요. 이게. 네, 그렇게 해서 실제로 어떤 텍스트 상에서의 이 워드가 이 비전 상에서 혹은 이 이미지를 나타내는 벡터 공간 상에서의 요 오브젝트 혹은 요, 요 부분에 해당하는 이 히든 스테이트 벡터 걔가 어떻게 보면 얘는 이미지고 얘는 그 비주얼 피처고 쟤는 이제 워드 혹은 텍스트에서의 피처이긴 하지만 피처 벡터긴 하지만 얘두 개는 기본적으로 하이 레벨에서는 같은 거다라고 하는 이 코레스폰던스를 우리가 좀 학습을 직접적으로 해주겠다 약간 이거잖아요 그래서 이제 저거를 비디오 캡셔닝이나 뭐 그때 이제 뉴럴 톡 같은 거 아마 보여줬을 텐데 이제 비디오 캡셔닝을 할때 사용자가 뭐 어떤 뭐 예를 들면 이 사진을 보고 아 캡션을 생성하시고 다 이거 사람 보고 시켜갖고 뭐 크라우소싱 해갖고 만든 이제 그라운드 트루스 데이터에서 이게 뭐 A bird flying over the sea 뭐 이렇게 되면은 그거를 이제 사람이 실제로 생성을 한 그라운드 트루스 캡션인데 이거를 보고 예를 들면 그 각각의 단어를 생성할 때 사람의 눈이 눈이 이미지 상에서 어디를 보고 있는지 그거를 다 트래킹을 하는 거예요. 그래서 뭐 HCI나 뭐 VR, AR 뭐 이런 거 저기 조금 알면 여기 좀 들어갔으면 그게 아이 트래커, 뭐 게이지 트래커 뭐 이런 류의 디바이스들이 좀 있거든요. 그래서 이제 뭐 모니터에 이렇게 좀 작은 뭐 이렇게 웹캠 같은 거 달아두면 내가 모니터 상에서 어디를 쳐다보고 있는지가 다 이게 트래킹이 되는 거거든요. 그래서 그런 거를 가지고 직접적으로 사람이 그 캡션을 생성할 때그 눈이 어디를 봤는지 그걸 트래킹을 하는 거예요. 그게 어떻게 보면 여기서 쓰일 수 있는 그 어텐션 값을 직접적으로 스퍼바이즈를 하는데 쓰일 수가 있겠죠. 그라운드 트루스로서. 그래서 그렇게 한 연구들도 있어요. 네. 근데 그, 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 네, 그렇게 하는 게 목적이 뭘까요? 그러니까 그렇게 어텐션이 지금 뭐 우리가 원하는 대로, 그러니까 우리한테 좀 입맛에 맞는 대로 어텐션의 패턴이 학습이 됐다. 그거 가지고 뭐 그거 갖고 뭐 하죠? 그러니까 여기서의 목적은 여전히 중간 단에서의 어텐션 웨이트를 이제 슈퍼바이즈를 하든 안 하든 간에 결국은 여기서 우리가 하고자 하는 거는 메인 테스크가 뭐냐? 이미지 캡션이면 이 캡션 여기서 생성되는 그것들에 대한 어떤 네, 생성된 워드들의 어떤 정확도가 최대한 높아지기를 바라는 것이고 머신 트랜슬레이션이다. 그럼 중간에 이 패턴이 사실 아까 뭐그 네, 이, 이런 류의 패턴이 엉망으로 나와도 하여튼 뭐로 가도 서울만 가면 된다고. 뭐로 가도 하여튼 그 번역 성능만 올라가면 되는 거 아니에요. 그리고 그 번역 성능은 뭐냐? 결국은 어디서 걸리는 로스냐? 바로 이, 이, 이 단에서 걸리는 로스잖아요. 그쵸? 그렇죠? 이거 어떻게 보면 중간에 내가 괜히 간섭해갖고 중간에 이 액티베이션 맵은 혹은 이 어텐션 벡터가 이렇게 되어야 된다라고 굳이 내가 끼어들어갖고 이렇게 가르쳐 주는 것 자체가 과연 그러면 
이쪽에서 여전히 우리의 포커스는 이쪽에서의 성능인데 그쪽 성능을 실제로 올려주는데 도움이 될 것이냐 안될 것이냐 사실 이런 좀 약간 펀더멘탈한 이슈가 있긴 있어요. 네. 사실 뭐될 거라고도 생각이 될수 있지만 뭐 그게 꼭왜 돼야 되나? 그게 꼭 떨어뜨릴 수 있는 거냐 괜히 간섭해갖고. 네. 그래서 이제 그런 것들은 뭐 기본적으로 이게 다 레귤러라이제이션이라는 큰 틀에서 좀 설명이 되고요. 그러니까 어찌 됐건 여기에서의 성능 이 여전히 조기가 우리가 이제 메인 아, 테스크로서 우리가 이제 관심 있는 에, 부분인 거고 이 중간 단에서 이렇게 로스를 준다는 거는 걔를 그렇게 했을 때 그러니까 하여튼 뭐 레귤러라이제이션도 다 그런 거잖아요 그러니까 L2 혹은 에러 레귤러라이제이션도 뭔가 걸면 지금 현재 학습 데이터에 대해서의 성능은 좀 깎아먹을 수는 있지만 그게 이제 언신 데이터에 대해서의 성능은 실제로 조금 경험적으로 해봤더니 뭐 적절한 이제 하이퍼 파라미터 쓰면 거기 이제 성능이 좀 올라가더라 약간 이런 어떤 시나리오이기 때문에 역시 여기서도 저거를 적절한 수준에서 이제 레귤러라이저로서 줬더니 레귤러라이저 레귤러라이저라는 레귤러라이저라는 것은 역할이 뭐냐 지금 주어진 학습 데이터에 대한 우리 메인 테스크의 성능을 그것만을 이제 그 그것만을 집중해서 높이면 그러면 하여튼 그게 오버피팅이 된다 그래서 뭔가 네, 그거를 좀덜 신경 쓰고 좀 지금 현재로서는 좀 상관이 없어 보이는 이것도 좀 어, 최적화하는데 좀 신경을 써봐라. 그러면 이제 경험적으로 봤더니, 혹은 결과적으로 봤더니, 언신 데이터에 대해서의 그 성능이 이제 올라간다. 약간 이런 시나리오가 기본적인 레귤러라이제이션이잖아요. 드랍아웃도 레귤러라이제이션. 그왜 레귤러라이제이션이죠? 학습할 때는 굳이 노드를 막 빼고 그러면은 학습을 굳이 망치거나 아니면 더 방해를 하는 건데. 근데 뭐 그렇게 좀뭐 해집어 놓고 그러니까 이제 언신 데이터에 대해서 뭔가 뭐 약간 이런 듯이 이것도 어떻게 보면 그런 큰 틀에서는 이제 레귤러라이저로서 네, 역할을 한다고 볼 수가 있어요. 네. 하여튼 뭐, 네. 이런 그라운드 트루스를 그러면 뭐다 중간중간 개입을 하고 뭐 그러는 게 좋을 수 있는데 하여튼 그거가 이제 너무 페인, 뭐좀 일이 많이 들어가는 작업일 수 있고. 근데 이제 또뭐 이런, 어, 어, 아까 그 이미지는 사실 이게 딱그 그리드로 봤을 때딱요 위치에 그 내가 찾고자 하는 새가 있다. 좀 그런 게좀 약간 덜 명확할 수가 있는데 이제 언어 이 NLP 쪽에서는 그래도 워드 레벨에서의 그래도 좀 명확한 코레스폰던스는 어느 정도는 좀 있, 있을 수가 있고 사실 그래서 이 언어 쪽에서는 뭐 그런 정보를 좀더 그라운드 트루스로 사용을 하는 경우들도 있고요. 그리고 뭐또 이게 아마 뭐설뭐 설명을 좀 시간 관계상 다는 못하겠지만 이제 뭐 메모리 네트워크라고 부르는 또 엑스터널 메모리를 또 활용한 네트워크 네, 그런 거 아마 뭐 강의 때도 조금 아마 나왔을 텐데 거기서도 이제 아, 엔드 투 엔드 기반의 이제 메모리 네트워크 있고 엔드 투 엔드가 아니라 그 이제 메모리 상에서 이때는 요걸 봐야 되고 이 다음 번째는 요걸 봐야 되고 그 중간 단계에서의 그, 어, 그 그것도 결국 어텐션이잖아요 메모리라는 구조상에서 어디를 어텐션을 할지 그거를 중간 단계에서 직접적으로 슈퍼바이즈를 한 초기 버전의 네트워크가 있고 이제 그거 없이도 네, 엔드 텐드로도 잘 된다라는 이제 두 번째 이제 두 번째 버전의 이제 메모리 네트워크도 있고 그래요. 네. 하여튼 큰 틀에서는 그렇다는 거고요. 네. 중간 나중에 액티베이션 되어서 맨 처음에 있는 아, 그거는 좀 약간 말도 안 되는 예제를 내가 그냥 만든 거야. 네. 그러니까 그냥 어쨌건 내가 중간 단에 생긴 그 액티베이션 맵을 혹은 중간 단계에 생긴 그 히든 스테이트 벡터를 내가 직접적으로 개입해서 얘는 이렇게 돼야 되라고 내가 네. 하여튼 슈퍼바이즈를 할수 있다는 거죠. 그것도 큰 틀에서는 그런 네. 멀티 테스크 러닝으로서 뭐다 설명이 될수 있다. 또 다른 질문 있어요? 그래서 so, yeah, in summary, yeah, we can just directly supervise this attention uh, weight vectors by incorporating the external uh, ground truth information or uh, they can be trained in an end-to-end -end manner. Okay, and I think that's it for the attention, mo attention model. I think I addressed this guy. I think I uh, yeah, answered this question uh, at the end of last class. So if you haven't, yeah, if you I, if I didn't answer the question, yeah, yeah, please uh, talk to me after the class.
Okay, so yeah, it looks like uh, you have many questions in the detection and segmentation part, which is our uh, our lecture 11. Uh, personally, that lecture, uh, not that particular lecture, but the topic of this uh, detection and uh, I mean image detection or this uh, localization and the segmentation. So those topics are a little bit kind of dirty. I mean, what I mean by that is, like uh, as you saw, like there is a first first stage. Uh, that uh, extracts out uh, the this kind of a potential regions as our candidate, right? Through this uh, region proposal kind of a network or things like that, right? And then uh, each of these uh, regions uh, will be given to the second stage of our network, right? So that way, it's already like uh, yeah, a little bit messy in in terms of our clean design of our network. So we want like given one image. And then uh, our network uh, takes that image and then through some yeah, kind of clean or standard uh, convolution or any other uh, networks and then we want it to give a like yeah the, the output that we desire but uh, in the detection modules or maybe instant segmentation and things like that so we just uh, extract out many um, yeah many number of I mean, many possible regions as the proposed uh, candidate uh, that can potentially have a particular object of our interest, right? So in that sense, I think, yeah, this RCNN or faster RCNN and mask RCNN might be a little tricky to study. And also the code itself or the 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 programs uh, that performs, I mean, the implementation code of this uh, detection module is also quite kind of dirty, involving a lot of heuristics and uh, different parameters. Like how many uh, regions uh, uh, we will ex yeah we extract out of a single image, and then uh, what is the uh, possible ratios or the possible aspect ratio of the uh, proposed regions in our image? It is sometimes just uh, one to one, or sometimes it is uh, uh, generating the region region as a kind of wider one or the narrow one and so on, and with the different sizes. But anyways, yeah so. <coughs> But that's that. But yeah, uh, let me just uh, yeah uh, address this guy about uh, probably the last question about this RNN. So if you guys uh, studied this, uh, uh, <coughs> so did we cover the beam search? Beam search. <coughs> Yeah. Okay, and then yeah, uh, I strongly encourage you to watch the the beam search part of the lecture. But uh, let's see. Yeah, what I want to discuss about this decoding phase is. So let's consider this a sequence to sequence model, although it is not involving the attention module, but uh, let's just consider it uh, involving an attention module. And then um, <coughs> during the training phase, yeah, we generate this particular word through this argmax operation uh, from the softmax output, right? And then uh, we pick up the most probable keyword as an output, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, during the training phase, we don't actually uh, generate the um, explicit output. So, suppose yeah, we have a dictionary that has a three uh, yeah three distinct term as our vocabulary. Maybe a word A, B, and C, and then maybe ten percent, seventy percent, and twenty percent. Suppose this is our softmax output. And then the ground truth should be 0, 0, 001. Okay? And then we know how to apply this uh, softmax loss, right? And so during this uh, training phase, training phase, uh, yeah, training phase, so we will pick up or choose uh, this most probable word B as an output, right? So that is a, a kind of a deterministic way of generating the, uh, the output at this particular time step. But uh, we can. Uh, 
이거 설명했나요? 안 했죠? 이게 아마 뭔가 질문을 했던 그 학생한테만 설명한 것 같은데. 네. Okay, so in this case, alternative strategy would be to uh, choose uh, the keyword randomly following this distribution. So in this case, if we just uh, apply this argmax operation uh, out of uh, maybe 100 uh, trials, and then the out, yeah, all the time the output will be always fixed as B, right? So this is the uh, particular strategy that we take by applying the argmax operation. But uh, if we just uh, do the um, softmax, I mean the, uh, the random sampling or stochastic kind of sampling based uh, like output generation, and then, yeah, it is not always generating B, but with the, although the probability is small, but with the 20% of probability, we can generate the output of C. So in this case, <coughs> if we uh, give the C as an input to the next time step, and then yeah, it will go through the um, completely different path of generating the output, right? So <coughs> in this case, once we trained our model or or this a sequence generation model, and then if we just apply argmax, and then yeah, we will just uh, obtain only one particular output because we just deterministically choose the most probable word, right? But uh, if we just apply this uh, stochastic kind of, or random sampling in our decoding kind of a strategy, and then, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, with the different probabilities, uh, I mean, yeah, from one set of samples, it will generate one sentence, and then uh, suppose we, uh, yeah, we obtain another sample, and then sometimes uh, A will be chosen and then the rest of the um, uh, sequence will also be completely different, right? So that way, we can generate the multiple different outputs, at least, right? So that is corresponding to, like, this part, right? So by using the stochastic kind of sampling pro process in the decoding phase, okay? So in that case, uh, the output can be more diverse. Okay, then let's uh, let's move to the detection and the segmentation part. Okay, so <clears throat> other than simple kind of image level classification, yeah, you have to be familiar with the task definition at least among uh, these uh, different uh, different uh, tasks of classification and uh, localization. I mean, yeah, it is uh, not relatively important because uh, it can be just viewed as the standard kind of classification, but uh, when classifying this image as a maybe a cat, uh, cat image, and then we additionally generate this a bounding box or the exact location information as this a bounding box, or yeah, and then this uh, object detection, and uh, yeah, in this case of an object detection, uh, as I mentioned, the model can be a little bit messy, right, but uh, the main reason for having to have this uh, messy model is because uh, in this case we now have a variable number of an output in a single image yeah we can have multiple I mean different numbers of an answer so in this case yeah we have a kind of three answers because of there exist three different objects okay so <clears throat> yeah uh, in general our neural net will take the fixed number of or more exactly, fixed dimensional uh, vector representation, and also as an output, it will generate the fixed uh, number of an output as a yeah as an out yeah as a final final vector representation. And so, <coughs> yeah, dealing with the variable number of answers, uh, yeah, given a single image. So that is, I think, the main reason 
for having uh, this uh, messy kind of model. And then, <clears throat> yeah, you know the definition clearly about this object detection, uh, which generates the yeah potentially like multiple different objects and their object category and their location. Okay, and then this uh, instance segmentation. Uh, Okay, let me just uh, briefly describe about uh, uh, this uh, semantic segmentation part. Uh, the semantic segmentation, yeah, uh, depend. I mean, from the from the number of an output of whether the number of output is fixed or, uh, yeah, or uh, yeah, or varying. I mean, this uh, semantic segmentation will also, yeah correspond to the fixed fixed number output so in this case the categories or the possible uh, possible categories are also fixed so if we just consider grass cat tree sky and then yeah we just perform a uh, four class classification problem okay and uh, uh, the instance or the entity to to classify with respect to these four uh, predefined classes is individual or each pixel that we have right so if we just to consider maybe it's, uh, 30 by 30 images and then we now perform 900 data items classification okay with respect to these predefined classes so in terms of our uh, uh, semantic segmentation output okay and then the output should have the same size of width and height as our final activation map, and then if our uh, variable, the number of uh, number of classes uh, is four, which is a predefined, and then each pixel, I mean, each pixel will have the channels as four, right? And uh, each of this uh, four-dimensional vector will be the output of the softmax layer uh, that. Uh, indicates the distribution of this particular pixel yeah across or with respect to these predefined uh, four different classes so that is the semantic segmentation and uh, in the case of this uh, instance segmentation was the difference between this uh, <coughs> of this uh, instance segmentation from the semantic segmentation so yeah semantic segmentation is uh, yeah, mainly, yeah, I mean, it assumes the detection uh, is performed first, right? So, <clears throat> if we just performed uh, each of this, uh, yeah, detection mask or this uh, bounding box or this uh, patch corresponding to a particular yeah, object, and then, yeah, we identify, yeah, the relevant or uh, basically the foreground pixel corresponding to the main object within this patch okay if we classify this patch as dog and then we classify each pixel within that patch uh, of whether that pixel is corresponding to dog pixel or not right and then here yeah so we have these two dogs so in the case of an instant segmentation as I mentioned the detection is done first so this uh, pixel level classification uh, is done uh, yeah is done by uh, patch by patch right so in this case this guy the this is another dog right but here the this pixel and uh, this these uh, these two pixels are yeah differentiated in this task right because Again, uh, we uh, first applied or we first performed the detection first, and so this is the this is the the patch of dog one, and this is another patch of dog two, right? And so in this case, yeah, although it may not be that much uh, main kind of issue, but here, yeah. So this part, okay. So this part is still part of the dog, right? But that belongs to the first dog, right? But this uh, magenta or this pink patch is about the second dog, right? Dog ID two. So this pixel 
should be considered as like a background, right? Not belonging to the dog of our main interest in this patch. Yep, but uh, if we imagine the uh, uh, semantic segmentation task given this, yeah, this entire image, and then, yeah, and then this dog patch or this dog uh, pixels, they will not be differentiated. So they will be just classified as just a, a dog pixels. We don't uh, discriminate their identity. So this is the first dog and that is the different dog. Yeah, we don't discriminate that. So about this uh, classification plus localization question, yeah, can yeah, can anyone give the the page number? Um, I mean the slide number. 이거 누가 질문한 거죠? So. Okay, and then uh, let me just uh, address the simpler question of this uh, classification plus localization class score and the box coordinate and the pose estimation. How do we compute the log? I mean, yeah, yeah, we need uh, their own uh, ground truth information, right? So in order to perform the localization task, in addition to the classification, yeah, we need uh, explicit uh, label information about the exact kind of location of that uh, that object, okay, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, and in the case of a detection task or this uh, localization task, uh, the problem, yeah, is uh, basically, yeah, rather than a classification, but it is more of a regression problem, right, because we want to determine the real valued position among our entire image that indicates the, the top left position or the bottom right position uh, that describes or gives the information about where this dog is located. Right? So in this case, in the case of detection task, yeah, uh, we typically perform the regression on the four different real values as our target output, right? So the four real value is this uh, top left corner and their their position, right? And also the width and also height, which is W and H, right? So these four uh, values will of course ranging from the first pixel position of one through maybe 64, I mean 640, and one through the yeah three twenty yeah in case our image original image size is uh yeah six forty by three twenty, so in that case <coughs> yeah x and y and also w and h will have this particular range but yeah <coughs> yeah we don't yeah we do not just explicitly impose that kind of a uh, particular range of these possible values, but we just uh, direct yeah we just uh, apply the direct regression. <coughs> Regression on these uh, x, y, and w and h by just uh, treating them as just uh, uh, unlimited kind of real, real values. Does it make sense? <coughs> so. <coughs> I think I handled uh, this question. So, you got Chimon's Yeah, so uh, 
아 이거 두 개를 어떻게 합치냐? 아, 네. Okay, so yeah, assuming that question is a uh, yeah. Uh, coming from this slide, so it is just typical multitask learning, right? So for this part, we perform the classification loss, uh, which is formulated as a softmax loss. But in this part, so yeah, in more detail, given our image, and then yeah, given these uh, three class classification problem, and then we will yeah some yeah given some activation map or some fully connected layer output and then we will produce the three dimensional output which will be given as an input to a single softmax layer that will produce the sum to one probability vector probability vector and then uh, we apply the yeah, classification loss by using the softmax loss and then yeah we just apply the multitask learning so that we generate another output of x y w and h Right, and then uh, in particular, we don't use any, yeah, any nonlinear unit uh, on top of these values, and then we just uh, apply the squared loss. I mean the, yeah, L two loss, for example, right. So, if x was, uh, yeah, should be like this. So the the um, true x uh, coordinate uh, was twenty, but it happened that this uh, x was uh, computed as maybe 35 and then yeah in the case of regression task we typically apply this kind of squared loss right so <coughs> so we have this kind of a loss for each of our yeah for regression uh, target variable and then yeah even though the units are different so uh, in this case uh, uh, it is a softmax loss uh, from the log of yeah, negative log of pi, for example, and then uh, this guy is just uh, square the difference in terms of a pixel level. So basically, the units are different uh, because that is the the pixel squared, right? So that is the unit used in that uh, regression loss. And then in this case, it is like a KR divergence or yeah, kind of abstract kind of unit kind of thing, right? And then yeah, anyways, even though they are uh, having a different units, but yeah, it is still like combining them as a single loss by just assigning some, yeah, some weighting parameter, and then just adding them together to form a single, uh, single loss. Any questions about it? Oh yeah. But uh, we involve some uh, hyperparameter, of course. Okay. Okay. So the time's up. So let's see. So today is a Wednesday. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, so you, uh, it's time to focus on your own uh, kind of project, right? So we will probably have no uh, big, yeah, no significant homers. Uh, until the uh, until the uh, end of our semester, so yeah, I yeah, yeah I encourage you to just to focus uh, as much as possible on your project. Okay. Okay. See you. Uh, yeah, next Wednesday. Okay. The slide is like page. convolution. It's convolution. いい部分でABCD까지 네. 네.
아 교수님 그리고 그 뭐지? 오늘 퀴즈 1 번이요 답이 없는 거 아니에요? 아 그래요? R C N N, m a s c o R C N N 하고 f a s T C N N 하고 f a s t e r C N N이요 다 리즈널 어로아이를 쓰잖아요. 이거 장, 자, 작년에도 그 오타 였어가지고 아, 전체 아, 다 봤던 것 같은데 아 그러네요 네, <웃음> 네 그러네요 어? 아니 오늘 1번 답이 없어 알차는 뭐야? 안 써도 돼요? 